provider is customers going out and doing it themselves. So it's incumbent on Orange to prove that we have value beyond what a customer can do themselves with SD-WAN. So over the next 10 or 15 minutes, what I'll talk about is how does Orange add value to SD-WAN beyond what you can get by doing it yourself. So that's really the whole point of what I'll talk about. So first thing I'll talk about is what we call the next-gen hub. So we've deployed um, Cisco SD-WAN into our network throughout the world in this next-gen hub. We actually had these in place for a long time. We used to call them IP service nodes, but we've expanded out to do virtualized services, network access, cloud connectivity services, and our backbone network exists in those locations. So what does that give to our customers? It's a place where we can interconnect your network to the cloud, to our private network, and to the internet to provide a centralized point of connection between those points. One thing that um, a lot of customers, when they think of SD-WAN, and you think if you hear the zero touch provisioning, the simple provision, and I can do this very easily, and I always say that there are two cases under which you can do zero touch provisioning in SD-WAN. One, your entire network is internet-based. Two, you don't have an existing network. So if you're doing a greenfield deployment into a network, yes, zero touch provisioning is great. If you don't have one of those two conditions, that means you're talking about an integration problem. So how do I integrate what exists in my network today? So I have internet and MPLS that exist today. How do I make that part of my SD-WAN environment? The, the next-gen service hubs are ways that we can integrate your underlay network with your overlay network. So as this stands today, there are 22 of these network nodes throughout our network, and they are positioned so that we can, we can connect your underlay network, your MPLS network, into your overlay network or your SD-WAN network. So for, as an example, there are limitations within any SD-WAN provider. There are limitations in the number of tunnels that I can provision by the box. So if I have a very small box, I have a limited number of SD-WAN tunnels I can create in that box. And we can create a core network by region that allows you to use a smaller network box because you can create just any, any networks that create you know, a regional or they can be country specific. Another key point of the next-gen service hubs is in countries like China, where if you're going to use a standard configuration in China and say, I'm going to use the internet as my method and my underlay network, then you're going through the Great Firewall of China, and then your VPN is going to be, sorry, your SD-WAN overlay network is going to be subject to problems. Um, the, the, fire, the Great Firewall is not actually acknowledged by China, so it doesn't, they don't even acknowledge that it exists. So if you have a problem with VPN going through that gateway or that firewall, can't call the government, the Chinese government, and say, hey, you're blocking this port and you need to release it. They don't even acknowledge that it exists. So we created this idea that we'll put an SD-WAN hub inside China, aggregate all your SD-WAN traffic, and then send it over private network to get it outside of China. So we see that as a value add that we can bring that would be very difficult, frankly, if you're going to do that on your own and go and create your own gateway inside China. There's a lot of regulatory issues in that. So we created that similar kind of situation inside Russia with uh, the idea of, uh, of um, encryption and how I can get encryption outside the country. So we, you know, these, these network hubs, you'll see that they have uh, uh, various cloud providers put in there as, as uh, connectivity. So you may have uh, Equinix connectivity, G Suite, Office 365. So we have the capability to direct to connect your network directly from our, our MPLS network, directly from your SD-WAN network into these um, cloud service providers. Um, they, they're everywhere in the world, and you know um, it's very easy to turn up a new cloud service provider. So if you say, hey, I need connectivity to Azure in a place where we don't have it, we can swing that up and, you know, within a reasonable amount of time. You'll notice that a lot of them are um, have Equinix in there, where you can use them as a partner and part of our um, our infrastructure for delivery. We're having a very bad time with internet, you know, especially when they're going to a South African internet site because their traffic was going all the way to Europe and coming all the way back down. In their instance, we use this next-gen service hub as an internet gateway inside the country, and now all of their South African users, when they want to get to a, um, a South African internet, well, actually all their internet, we drop them off right in South Africa. It greatly improved the performance of their, their customer's network just in that. By the way, one of the things I always ask customers is what percentage of your traffic goes to the internet, counting for your cloud traffic, 
The lowest number I've heard in the last 18 months is 55%. The highest number is 95%. So if you look at your network and say, yesterday I was trying to get to my data center, I built an MPLS network that got me to the data center, right? That was, it, it only makes sense that that's by the way I'm going to make my network. Well, today it's 95%, and I know that's an extreme example, but if we use the extreme, 95% of my traffic is destined for the internet. SD-WAN is a really good way to move that internet access and move that traffic from the center of the network off to the edge. So now my user traffic isn't using expensive and less to get to my internet gateways, and I'm not creating that hair for the domain and out. So that's you know that's fun. so that's sort of value number one is these SD WAN gateways that we deploy within our network. The second um, the second advantage that we we'll bring here is flexible security options. Every time, 100% of the time that I'm talking to customers about SD WAN, the, the second conversation is around security. So you have to think, of, if we think about what I just said, with I'm moving my internet access from a centralized, maybe I have three, maybe you have four centralized gateways, very easy to manage three or four centralized security gateways. It's a lot more difficult when, I have to when I'm going to decentralize that. And SD-WAN, one of the advantages is to really decentralize that internet access. So when you look at I'm decentralizing that, how am I going to handle my security? There are, there are you know, a couple ways that we see this happening. You know, the, the basic SD-WAN security is fine for, well, I'll say it this way, for global multinationals, I have very few that say, hey, a zone-based firewall is good for me, everything's good, we're, we're good with security. For most of our customers, that's table stakes, and we need to, we need to have that zone-based firewall in place, but if we want to layer one of these other security platforms on top, and Orange has the capability to bring um, web-based security, so this could be uh, you know, cloud-based security that we've got um, partnerships with various cloud service providers, uh, cloud security platforms, on-site security, so we can do that via a virtual network function that exists inside ECPE, or a physical firewall that sits at every site, or data center um, removal, so basically take my, my internet access that used to exist in my data center and move it into a, cloud, a hosted cloud environment. So maybe I am go from three data center gateways to 10 hosted cloud gateways, something like that. So when I talk to customers about which way they're gonna go here, I would say probably 50, 60% of our customers are, are sort of in this one right here. Say I'm gonna use a web-based security platform so I have a single um, uh, infrastructure that I can control and my reporting infrastructure is again from that centralized uh, web-based security platform out to uh, my SIM to do that SIM integration. So, but the, the key that Orange brings is that these are multiple security solutions, right? And they're not all necessarily Cisco-based. They can be whatever our customers are looking for. We have very few customers that are 100% Cisco in their infrastructure. You know, if you look at the infrastructure staff from top to bottom, and we're here to be flexible and bring what, what, what solutions our customers are looking for. The other thing that we'll bring to uh, SD-WAN is, is uh, we have integrated this into our reporting tools. So one of the reporting tools is an uh, SD-WAN customer portal. Um, so if you look at Cisco SD-WAN, you know there's the vManage, is the portal that you would normally use to manage. What we did is integrated that, we use APIs to, so you, the customer, will see this portal and we use APIs into vManage to control and make things simpler and make it easy for our customers to manage. Those are things like monitoring, so you can see what sites are up and down. Reporting, so we use live action as a reporting engine, so we'll use all the, all the, all the, the, the uh, packet capture and everything else that comes with live action to create reporting. You can do um, configuration control, so one of our things that customers are always looking for is a co-managed offer, right? Orange, I want you to bring SD-WAN to me, but I don't want to own the whole thing. I want to be able to do things like change the way my applications work within my environment, so we'll give you the ability to do that with, within our portal, but overall, the management of the infrastructure remains with Orange. So we, we put this portal together to bring the right level of control to our customers. This is a really key point of this whole thing, is how, so again, if Orange was just here saying, okay, we're going to sell SD-WAN, um, 
you know, we, we put you into be managed and it's completely isolated and, you know, everybody has their own thing. What we've done here is integrated the tooling for our service management so that they get information from many different sources within our environment. So if our customer, for example, has both MPLS, Internet, and SD-WAN from us, the problem you have there is you have multiple service management elements looking at different pieces there. And it can cause extended outage times when you have, you know, two people chasing two different things at two different, at the same time, right? So we built um, a system that integrates all these recordings from these different systems. So our reporting, our agents get a single view of your network and they're not chasing multiple problems. So if you have a local loop outage, for example, well, that's going to necessarily create, could create an SD-WAN outage. I don't want somebody chasing an SD-WAN problem while somebody else is chasing a local, local loop outage. So this allows us to integrate that and bring it into one system. The key point here is that Orange is investing in, in uh, this solution and bringing this solution as a full integration into our environment. The last thing I'll talk about, um, there's a, a demo over here or, or a, a, it kind of goes through what Open Lab is. But this is a really key point of what Orange has done with, with our network. We've built an instance of, of Cisco SD-WAN. We have different instances of it around the world. So we have one instance in the Middle East and Africa, one in Europe, one in North and South America, one in Asia Pacific. So what this what we use this for is every 100% of the customers that we have sold SD-WAN to have done pilots before they deploy. So the question is, how do you do a pilot? What does a pilot look like in your environment? And what we have found is the worst way to do a pilot is to ship equipment to your location, deploy it, we have to get outages, we have to get downtime, we have to get info security to agree that this is okay, we have to keep it isolated from your production network. I've done those before, they take easily 90 days without any problem in shipping. If you're gonna do it globally, right? It'll take easily 90 days to just get the equipment in place and get ready to do this, this test, this pilot. We already have that deployed within our environment, so we can create your network, replicate what you do in your network in our open lab environment and prove out whether or not this is a good idea for you and how things will work. The one thing that open lab is not, it's not a sandbox where you come in and play and see what happens and do it via statement of work. So we'll sit down with you and decide what elements are important to you. So this could be things like, uh, I want to do WAN op integration. I want to see security integration. I want to see what failover looks like. I want to see what path selection looks like. So we can work with you. We've got a list of, you'll see, uh, you know, if you sit through that presentation over there, I think there's eight or 10 of them. There's a list that keeps growing with every customer. We find always find something new to test. It can be as short as one day and as long as four days, right? That's the longest one we've done is for four days. So it's really about sitting down with our customers, understanding what you're trying to do, design it, test it, and then once we test it in the open lab environment, then we can bring it out to your network to just deploy it and see how it works in your environment. And in fact, usually when we do this, we're doing global, large global networks. The customer example I'm going to show you in just a second is 1,500 sites. That's how big it's like an enterprise, global enterprise customer, 1,500 sites. So the second thing after deciding whether or not whether it works technically or not is how am I going to deploy it? So developing a, a playbook for deployment, and that will be the second part of the pilot, right? The first part is technically will this work, and then we'll move into the deployment and move that out. Usually we'll pick you know, a selective um, site, select a few sites, a dozen sites in your network, deploy them, we'll have lessons learned, and then deploy it and figure out a, a template for deployment globally from there. One of, it's hard to confirm this, but one of the largest enterprise deployments of SD-WAN in the world, 1,500 sites that we're doing for Siemens. Um, you know, obviously we have a, a we've signed a, um, an agreement to use their name in a, an environment like this, but it's a very large deployment, um, 30 months. It's in 96 countries all over the world. Um, the first deployment is with the Edge solution, so we're using the hardware-based solution, but we'll get into appliance-based, uh, I'm not sorry, into using uh, UCPE as the deployment with BNS from here forward. So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea. And, and by the way, everything that I just talked about, what we do in this, how we add value, it's, it's in the Siemens network. Everything I just talked about is part of the Siemens environment. So if you have any questions about SD-WAN or want to get into more detail, I'm more than happy to have that conversation. I know we're going to have the raffle with Joshua's around here somewhere. He'll handle the, the raffle for the these, which is probably why you're here, right?
win. So, does anybody have seven zero zero seven? <laughs> that was crazy. I thought for sure we'd have to draw it a couple times. Cameron Fraser, can we get a picture with you? Absolutely. Was that good? All right. With Ferris.